With the current complex situation in Libya, we realize that migrants are still coming to the country. When you move in Libya, you see migrants in all parts of the city, you see migrants working even with the municipality, and when you still see migrants on the streets, you ask yourself a question, why are migrants here? Historically, Libya has been a huge migrant labor market, many of them trying to start a new life or trying to transit Libya towards a third country. If you are irregular in a country, you are more vulnerable, and this adds to the complexity of the situation for the migrants, because we know whenever there is a security situation in the country, it affects everybody. The drastic change was since 2011, the uprising. We were in a country that was very stable at the time. Uh, we've never witnessed any type of violence. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the country just broke into war. In 2011 was a turning point where IOM managed to evacuate almost 230,000 migrants from Libya and the neighboring countries. During that time, I had the chance to be the coordinator for the emergency team at the Tunisian border, where some days we were evacuating 6,000 migrants every day out of Tunis only. We managed also to move people by boat. We would start the trip from Benghazi, go to Misrata and the boat would carry also food and non-food items in addition to medical supplies. I remember one of the trips, I was one IM staff, 40 Libyan volunteers, fully committed to support their country and their nationals, and the boat got stuck in the sea for almost five days waiting for the permission to enter, and the whole team was dedicated to make sure that during that operation we evacuate more than 1,000 migrants and injured Libyans, and their life was saved thanks to the committed team serving our country. Any activity that we plan, we need to have two or three backup plans. That's for sure. This needs to be communicated to the beneficiary himself, to the government and the donor, because on a daily basis you can have a security incident, no airports, and people are uh, really depending on us. When you have no way to reach that person, you are, they just know you as a voice. The challenges overall is always about security concern, like moving someone from place to another or from detention center to airport. Absolutely work under stressful moments. We could stay at the airport 12 and 14 hours. 2014, 2014, I was from the train to 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 the ولكن كانت لي فكرة ودراية إني نجيت نفسي ونجيت السيارة وتعرضت لرماية مباشرة للرأس وكانوا ست إطلاقات. After 2011-2014, we were working with IDPs, which we've never experienced before. We couldn't even understand the concept of an IDP and how we can help them. It, was, it even touched us personally. And to feel that the organisation that we're working for was willing to assist us and our families, and that, that kind of reassured us at a point. In Libya now, 160,000 displaced Libyans have been through this conflict in Libya. It definitely affects the whole family. We target this group with direct assistance, but also assessments related to the numbers and the needs of the displaced Libyans all over the country. It provides a clear update on the situation of this displaced group. This helps decision makers in coordination also with the communities to make sure that the issues of internal migration within Libya by the Libyans is addressed. Through those projects, we were able to rehabilitate tens of water wells in the south. We established psychosocial support centers or centers for family and recreational activities. We have been able to rehabilitate a significant number of schools. Some of those schools are for everyone without discrimination, which means migrants and Libyans from different age groups. We conduct business trainings for people to start small businesses and by providing those options, people have more than one choice or alternative for income generation.
Whenever we talk about migration in Libya, the focus automatically goes to detention centers or the interceptions by the Libyan Coast Guards. But we also have to acknowledge that the number of detention will add up to less than 2% of the total migrant population in Libya. One of the main challenges remain that the majority of the migrants are not documented in the country. We know that the situation in detention centers is very difficult. We consider it inhumane and unacceptable. The basic needs are not even there. While IOM keeps calling for the closure of all detention centers in Libya and identifying alternatives to detention, part of IOM intervention is to improve the living conditions in detention centers. We never increase the space in any detention center in Libya. The presence of the international community helps, especially in mediation efforts and in making sure at least that the migrants have the basic services up upon disembarkation. When we talk about IOM doctors, going out of their way, trying to accommodate migrants in different hospitals where they have connections. Some of our doctors donated blood. We receive regular emails from our teams. If a migrant needs support, sometimes informally, our teams go to the hospital and try to support. نعمل في المنظمة كفريق متكامل لتخفيف معاناة المهاجرين العالقين في ليبيا ولا زلنا نعمل ونبذل المجهودات لآخر لحظة. One of the options that can be available for migrants who find themselves stranded in a country, we can support them to return back to their home country. Returning back to a country now from Libya, they won't make it if we're not there, or it will be very difficult for them. It's a bit costly. The migrant may not be able to have contacts with his embassy. They have a travel documents, secure an exit visa while he's fit or she's fit to travel with the medical checkup that we do. There is a detailed process that includes initial interview with the migrants. We know that the majority of migrants in Libya do not have documents, so we make sure that we coordinate with the embassies to issue travel documents. A detailed protection interview is done with the migrants to verify the voluntarity of the return. During that process, we carry out a medical screening to make sure that migrants are fit to travel, or for some medical cases, we verify if they would require a medical escort to go back home, and then once they are back home, we make sure that they receive the necessary support. With families, in many cases, the wife is in a place, the husband is in another place, and sometimes kids as well are in different places. And having them all together at the day of departure at the airport with tears of joy and, and happiness, feeling that they are back now, they're, they're returning home, and they depart all together. Between 2015 and now, we supported more than 40,000 migrants to return home. This it cannot be done without the trust that we managed to build with migrants. The way you present yourself as an institution, this is the way you build trust. On a daily basis, we meet new migrants, new cases, we hear new stories. It's emotionally draining, I can say that. But the motivation, what wakes you up every morning, it's the feeling of helping so little, but reflecting on, on their lives, it will be a huge, huge help. Working with the local authorities, we need to balance between short-term solutions, direct assistance, emergency response that is now being provided, and the longer-term objectives that would contribute to the overall migration management within the country, meaning capacity building to almost all the ministries working in the field of migration, trainings related to rights of migrants, and identifying alternatives to detention, Sometimes the detention center is full of migrants, especially if there is like a sea rescue, creating a lot of hassles and problems for the Libyan government to provide them with food, clothes, and sometimes they spend months on the detention center. So for them to go out and work is probably more cost effective for the Libyan government, for everyone. The humanitarian community are working with the government to improve the situation. We managed in cooperation with the government to release migrants out of detention, to support programs. We would call for a holistic approach towards migration management within the whole country and a clear migration strategy from both sides of the Mediterranean, but also back to the countries of origin. IOM is calling for a safe and regular migration that is well managed for the best interest of migrants, but also for the communities. 
The status of the organisation has changed over the years. The government has become more open to international assistance. When the organisation had just established itself in Libya, our budgets ranged from 500,000 euros to 3 million maximum. Uh, whereas now, we are working on budgets that exceed the 100 million. I think IOM is probably the organisation, the only organisation that has a coverage of the country that is the biggest in terms of the region in which we are operationally active, not just Tripoli, but also the east, the south. I think that has been all thanks to the people based in Tunis, but also the national staff within the country that allowed the organization to grow and to become a reliable partner, because that's at the end is the secret. By being honest, by promising only what you can, keeping your words and providing the support when they need it on time, this is how we build trust. That's why in the past 12 years, what we've been doing is building trust one after another, one after another, one after another, incident after another as well. And being available because right now, that in every corner of Libya, there is an IMS staff. They are the one who built the reputation and they are the one who built the image we are having today.